Hi, welcome. My name's Claire Hooper. I'm one of the regional team with Southern Counties Baptist Association. And I know the team send their greetings, they send their love and they send their prayers and best wishes. And uh, and they're all just longing for a time when they can catch up properly with um, our, our ministers and our churches and our leaders. Uh, we do long for that time. And it seems that it could be maybe this year. So that's um, exciting. So last time I chatted to you guys, I um, talked about my journey with um, Genesis and I'd got to like chapter six. I feel like it's a bit of a confessional, safe space and all that. Well, I've only got to chapter 12, but I feel that God's actually wanting me to pause and to dwell here a little bit because it just keeps coming up, this, these passages for me. And um and that's kind of given me something around hope um, in reading these passages. And so it's going to start off quite bleak, but but we are going to get hopeful, OK? So hang on in there. Um, actually, it starts just before um, Genesis chapter 12, and that's Genesis chapter 11, verse 30, where it says that now Sarai was barren. She had no child. And um, it just struck me how hopeless that situation must have felt for the family in the sense of it being a, a, a full stop, no possibility of a continuing story um, for them in that way. Uh, especially in that sort of culture, it would have been like actually their line kind of stopped with them. There was no continuation of the family. It would have felt very bleak for them. It would have felt hopeless. And then we have um, that later on, we read a little bit later on, we read that they were being traveling towards the land of Canaan. But actually, the family and the extended family settled in Haran. They never saw the journey through. They settled somewhere, which wasn't, was, was not only meant to be a pit stop, but it wasn't a pit stop. They settled there. And why I said this might be a bit bleak is because uh, I hope I'm not being too brutal here. But it feels to me that actually some of our churches are barren. There are no children. There are no young people. It feels like actually the journey could stop with the generation that is in that church currently. There is no plan. There is no younger generation coming through that will continue the story of that church family. The church can feel barren. The church is barren. And then maybe you belong to a church where there are children and families and young people, and that's great. But you need to recognise that you're in a minority. And it very much isn't the case for so many of our churches. And again, I hope I'm not being too harsh. But maybe the church is also settled. It, it it's kind of stuck with what was familiar and what was comfortable and isn't pushing on to the land that they were maybe journeying towards what they were called to and has the church just got itself a bit stuck but when things are hopeless we know that God can move in a mighty mighty way because when God speaks he can speak hope into situations which seem hopeless. We know that when he spoke into chaos, the beauty of creation and all its diversity came about. And here we have the call of Abraham, where it says this, now the Lord said to Abraham, so the Lord spoke, spoke into that hopelessness and said, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. So remember, though, he didn't have any children. And so God spoke a promise into his hopelessness, into the bleakness of his situation. And Abraham moved into that kind of promise. He moved into that call. He left what was familiar, where maybe he had settled, and he moved into hope. He journeyed into hope. 
And uh, for me, because obviously it goes on then with the covenant that is made between Abraham and God and how the stars will be... Um, will be his, his sinners were as numerous as the stars. So the stars are like the promise of that, um, of God's faithfulness, that he will be true to his word. And he was. I wonder what are the promises that God has for you and for your church and for your community? Things might be looking bleak. They might be feeling very bleak. We might have lost contact with the families that we were in contact with and we might be panicking. But don't. But listen to what God is asking of you and respond and move into that call. And I have um, a, a, some words from um, a book called The Closest of God and it's by Gemma Simmons and it's, it's, it's a beautiful devotional book and there's a wonderful um, poem um, in there and as I read it I wonder which words strike you if there's a sentence or, or just a word what strikes you from this my hands are empty as I stand before you God my past is behind me gone beyond recall my present future unsure my future unknown how can I be certain that my life has been worthwhile? How can I find you and be sure of your will? Within this emptiness you promise a life fruitful as the countless stars. All you ask is that I trust your promise, that I take the risk of believing. Leave all that is safe and familiar, dare to walk into the unknown. Where can I find such faith, hope and courage? You call me by name. You offer a new homeland for my heart. My faith can even strengthen others. You open me to a future full of blessing and hope. With my open hands and my open heart, I feel vulnerable before you. The stars in the sky are a sign of your faithfulness. So, may God give you the faith, the hope and the courage to step into the promise that he has for you. Amen. <laughs>